This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Joe Gentry and he's here from United Way. Hi, Joe. So I know you've been busy through all of this. You ended your campaign. How did the campaign go? Campaign's still ongoing. It's, okay. it's going well. We got a late start this year okay. be because of COVID right. and, and all the plans that we normally do. Um, so packets and that got distributed and material got distributed in October and we're still getting returns. Good. But returns are good as as well as can be expected given the circumstances okay and i know you're very involved in the christmas wish list how's that going that's outstanding um it, it overwhelms me from the generosity of the people in our community we had 350 kids that were identified through the school success workers in alcona Posen, hillman and all alpena schools and aces academy and we were able to match every kid with their wish list. Amazing. With a potential gift donor. And we also got this year, people that didn't want to go shopping, um, were able to make cash contributions so that we could um, make sure that every child got at least three things off of their wish list. And the wish list consumes mainly needed items like clothing, boots, winter jackets, we don't concentrate on toys. This is these are all personal needs um, from the kids that participate in the wish list program. Well, I wasn't aware of that. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so last week we had donation week, and I have a great volunteer in Chuck Grushke, who kind of led me through the process because he's been doing this for for many years, and we were, we collected all the gifts. We got those that were unwrapped wrapped. Um, yesterday was sort day. We um, sorted all the gifts by, by family, bagged them all, and we're ready for delivery and pickup starting next week. Wow, amazing. Well, you know, you say you were kind of overwhelmed by the generosity, but look, look what Giving Tuesday, what happened in our community. Yeah. You know, per capita, we give way more than huge cities do. We do, and our, our Giving Tuesday was successful. We're running a December campaign. Um, for the whole month, we kind of kicked it off for Giving Tuesday. It's a roundup program where you can take a credit card and set it up through our website on our donate page and do a roundup. And so every time you use the credit card, it will automatically round up to a whole dollar amount. And your small change that are donated allows for big change at United Way. I like that. And you know, I went to a store recently and they said, do you want to round it up? And I thought, you know, not doing any math in my head, I thought, sure. And it, she said, thank you for the eight cents. Well, I thought, eight cents? And then I said, you know, make it a dollar. So she took it up to a dollar. But if everybody did that every time, and I mean, some people can't afford to do that, obviously, but eight cents certainly didn't hurt me at all. Our campaign chair, chairperson, one of them, Steve Wright, said that he signed up for Roundup, and he put a cap because you can cap the, when it reaches a total amount, it shuts the roundup feature off. He was surprised in how quickly he reached the cap. Really? He said because of using that credit card frequently. And so he said he had to go back in and adjust it <laughs> so that it <laughs> ran for the whole month. So um, it's a nice feature and a very simple, easy, painless way to support the United Way and all the agencies that we're supporting. So you go, how do you sign up? Go to your website? Go to the website, right on the bottom right hand screen, there's a donate tab. You hit that donate tab, the next screen says one time contribution, monthly contribution or roundup. Hit roundup and it'll process you through. And you know, with COVID and the way people's jobs and businesses close and businesses open and businesses close, it's so hard for anyone to know what to expect next. But I know at United Way, I'm sure you're working on what's next. We are. We still have money available in our emergency fund. Okay. Um, I just had a call today from um, the CRT Center. They have all these soldiers that are coming through for training, but they're going to be quarantined on the base. Ah. They won't be able to leave. 
And he, as, as the caller said, I don't know, we, we can deal with their military needs, but their moral needs are, are going to be at, at risk. And he said, so we would like to write a grant through the United Way to purchase game boards and gaming uh, material to help these soldiers have something to do while they're quarantined in the base and they're not on duty. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking forward to. That's Rent wonderful. assistance, power assistance. Um, when, when those um, restrictions go away, eviction notices and power shutoff notices, we know and we're anticipating of being able to step in and help people to pay their rent, to pay b Amazing. utility bills. I know those needs are going to be out there, that's for sure. Well, yeah. So other than the Roundup program, what way can people in our community help out the United Way or any of their agencies? They can volunteer. Okay. Um, we're, we do maintain the Volunteer Center website, which is a link to our website. Okay. There are volunteer opportunities. There are virtual volunteer opportunities, so you're not exposed. Okay. Um, you can contribute. Um, you can contribute through our website. You can send cash donations by mail. We're located at 108 Water Street in Alpena. Um, all, the f all of the funds that we get, 97% of them stay in Alpena, stay locally to support the programs and services of the, the community partners that we have. Okay. So Wonderful. So in order for someone to find out more information, they would look at your website. And then what about a phone number, Joe? Our phone number is 989-354-2221. And they can call and we'd be happy to, to um, help them through anything. Even people that have needs that don't know where to turn, we can process and get them attached to the service providers okay. that are helping meet people's needs. Perfect. Okay, I won't see you until next year, so Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your family and everyone at United Way, and thank you so much for all that you're doing in our community. Thank you, Nancy. We appreciate your support. Thank you. I'll be right back with Ann Gentry following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Ann Gentry from Downtown Development Authority. Hi, Ann. Hello, good morning. Good morning to you. And we had your dad on first. We did. And now we have you on. So it's the Gentry Show today. It is. <laughs> and it's, it's um, kind of cool. Like I said, I see both of you downtown occasionally when you were working downtown, walking with a cup of coffee in your hand and you were visiting businesses. It's kind of nice to have that, but it's nice to be working at home. But we want everyone to know, even though you're home, you're still staying in touch with everything. Yeah, absolutely. So our office has been working from home since Thanksgiving time and we'll be working at home through the end of the year but we're certainly still still working it's a busy time of year um, holiday shopping season is really busy for our businesses um, and then with the restaurants being open for takeout too you know we're still brainstorming trying to promote everyone um, even though we're not in the downtown to, through the end of the year and the big story has been about you're trying to expand so how is that going yeah, so we, we've started looking at what it would entail to expand our boundaries. Um, so currently we haven't expanded since 2004. So there's a, a lengthy process if we do expand. Um, of course, needs, the city needs to be on board, the county and the other taxing jurisdictions um, that would fund us as well. So we're in the, we're in the beginning stages um, of, of what that might look like. Um, we'd be looking at expanding up North 2nd Avenue or um, down Chisholm further in some of those districts that like have been historic, walkable, um, use and commercial, of course. So we're, we're looking through what that might entail and we've heard a lot of positive feedback from businesses in those areas that are interested. Well, that's good because, you know, kind of like a cutoff line, there's still businesses on that part that could benefit from all the wonderful promotions that the chamber and the downtown development and art, art, and, the, art and the law, not art and the, yeah, art and the loft, all those wonderful people do so they could join in too. Correct, yeah, and there's, you know, a lot of beautiful efforts that we can do as well yes um, you know we do the hanging flower baskets banners holiday decorations you know just these little things that make a big difference when people are walking through the area that make it look a little more spruced up and welcoming so I think that's a big kind of draw too is that we could use some of our funds to beautify those areas and then of course the grant eligibility is a big component too so through the state through the MEDC a lot of uh, most of their grants need to be in a downtown district so we've been fortunate to have a lot of support 
support from the MEDC yes. to, to renovate some of our buildings downtown in our current district. So that's really appealing too, I think, is, you know, there's so many historic buildings throughout our community. Um, so if property owners are, are interested in that, if they're in our district, they're now eligible to apply for some of those matching funds. Terrific. So when will we know when this all comes to fruition? You know, we've kind of, it's been busy with the end of the year between working from home. Um, so we're, we're just looking at what it would entail right now. Okay. Um, probably we'll meet again in the new year and, and look at what we found and how other communities have expanded and get some feedback from different businesses and properties that might be affected. Okay, and you know, Brooke and Kevin Peterson have just opened their business and now we're closed down again. So what help can you offer the restaurants and the businesses that can't be open right now? Yeah, so a lot of the, some of the restaurants, including Red Brick, Tap and Barrel, have got a little creative with what they're doing. So they're doing like cook, um, cooking classes at home so you can pick up food at their restaurant all the ingredients and then tune in on Facebook live and learn how to make oh, um, a special meal so so they're offering that um, fresh palette black sheep take five Bob's bullpen they're all doing takeout as well through the end of the year um, and I know some of them have specials on you know if you get gift certificates you get specials on a meal um, so they're trying to you know encourage people to still support local and then we've had a few um, volunteers within the DDA um, that are launching a promotion that should be going live um, towards the this week to end of this week so definitely stay tuned on downtown social media um, there'll be a promotion of you know you can enter to win different prizes if you shop if you support our downtown restaurants through this shutdown and you know if you just bought one meal a week um, just maybe one person in the family or a family meal one time a week it would really help and then then next week go to a different restaurant and do the mom and pop restaurants they're the ones that really need the assistance absolutely dine-in is such a big component of what restaurants do for that experience of in-person you know whether you're going out to celebrate so not having that is really harmful for our businesses um, so definitely what you said if you can if you can afford it even once a week try a different location I know that's what me and my fiance have been doing kind of work down the list a few times a week and and get some takeout and make sure to tip your servers as well since I know a lot of people yes. in the hospitality industry are, are hurting this time yes. of year so it's two and a half weeks to Christmas is, is there anything going on right now in downtown I mean other than what's going to be coming out yeah so we have all of our all of our businesses are still open um, so that's a question I've been getting is our retail shops open and absolutely um, we have over 30 shops and stores in the downtown so you can find anything you might need for your for people on your list and they're also many of them offer either curbside pickup FaceTime, private shopping, or online sales. So if you're not comfortable shopping in person yet, you can certainly shop online or in some of these other types of forms. Um, and then as far as festive events, we do have two story times with Santa. Um, and the next one will be Saturday, December 19th. So that will be virtual on our Facebook page, so Downtown okay. Alpena's. And we're partnering with the Alpena County George N. Fletcher Library to have virtual story time. So we'll have Santa reading a few, a few stories for kids, um, and kids can still drop off their letters in Culligan Plaza to make sure he gets them before Christmas Eve. And to find out more about that, do we look on your um, website? Yep, you can visit either downtownalpenami.com or um, hop on to Downtown Alpena on Facebook or Instagram, and we have all those details of how to participate. Okay, good, because that'll be fun. That's one thing about kids visiting Santa, you know, so sad and, you know, as we're taping this, there was a parade that was held, and I, I hope that that was successful, and people were able to social distance, stay in the car, and at least feel the Christmas spirit of a parade. Nothing's like a parade, you know, at Christmas time. I know. It's been hard not to have some of these holiday traditions. You know, we did do a virtual tree lighting mm -hmm. ceremony. It was completely empty in Culligan Plaza, except for me and Alicia at the chamber and the mayor. Um, you know, it's just so different this year, not having everyone gathered and being able to celebrate the holiday season. But there's still lots of ways to still kind of feel festive and a part of, you know, downtown Alpena during the season. Whether you, you know, take a walk through downtown when all the lights are on, you know, shop downtown, wear your mask, yes. um, or get takeout and enjoy it at home. You know, there's still plenty of things that are still, still going on that you can enjoy, even if some of the in-person gatherings can't happen this we year. We want all these businesses to be viable after this prayerfully is over so please support our local businesses and like I told your dad you know Alpina gives until it feels good look at how much for Giving Tuesday and and um, the United Way campaign how much people are donating and things that are happening with Christmas wish list and Toys for Kids Salvation Army St. Vincent de Paul you know um, all these wonderful organizations are coming forward and helping families in need so you know, thank, thank you so much for the downtown group and all that you do to help, too. Yeah, absolutely. And we're so happy that we have so many nonprofits downtown. I think we have nine. 
um, and a lot of those were part of the Giving Tuesday campaign, you know, Friends Together, Art in the Loft, Thunder Bay Theater, um, National Marine Sanctuary, just to name a few. So we're, we're so happy that these nonprofits called downtown home. And, you know, even though this year has been difficult, we've seen a lot of generous people step up yes. um, and want to help and ask how they can help. And, you know, our nonprofits are still working too. Um, so it's really been, you know, it's been a, a bad year in so many ways, but, you know, from our perspective, we've seen so many people come together and ask, you know, how can we help and how can we support other businesses so so we're looking forward to see what the new year might bring yes. um, hopefully we can host some of our in-person events again um, but I know a lot of our businesses have been asking you know how can we support each other because we want to make sure we're all open next year so it's been it's been heartwarming to see and luckily the community I think is supporting that as well very good we're out of time Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your staff and thank you so much for all you do in our community yeah, thank you for your support happy holidays thanks I'll be right back with Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings everyone and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning, Dr. Amber Vysotsky, social sciences instructor at ACC and Todd Artley, electrical trades instructor at ACC, both tremendous instructors. And uh, folks, we're taping on the last day of fall semester and uh, what a semester it's been. You know, how, how are you holding up? You know, great. It's been a roller coaster. <laughs> but um, my classes, actually, I, this semester have mostly been online and uh, remote video conferencing to start. So for me, it was sort of a smooth transition because we stayed um, the same uh, all the way through. But. Um, there's been some challenges, but overall, I think we've done a, a great job. Yeah, wonderful. Todd, yeah, how about and, you? Uh, well, because we were able to start with students on campus, although the class sizes, the classrooms were limited as far as how many students we could have in one location, we were using the video conferencing equipment and, and doing split classrooms. So, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a soft entry into this uh, online world for the technical programs yeah. but uh, uh, it, it worked uh, it worked well surprisingly well um, and uh, then when we did have to go remote that made that switch for our programs a little bit easzier on that and uh, uh, there, there have been challenges and uh, I've had to uh, restructure my testing and things that uh, like that uh, but um, um, it's, it's been fairly smooth, and I, th I still think we're doing a pretty good job of instructing. You know, for some of us older instructors who, who like the hands-on, face-to-face instruction, yeah. uh, it, uh, um, it, this is a, an acceptable alternative, I would say. It's probably not my, you know, my favorite. I'd rather have the students right in front of me, but uh, this, this works. Surprisingly, it works pretty well. Well, you folks make it work, mm -hmm. and you uh, uh, illustrate an interesting distinction that uh, many folks may not realize. Uh, you know, you're in an occupational area, uh, the utility tech and the associate electrical programs, and Am Amber, you're in kind of a transfer area where students oftentimes will transfer to a four-year university. Um, and the kind of the teaching methodologies can be slightly different. Uh, has that been a challenge? Um, it, it has, uh, but uh, thankfully with Amber here, she's, she's been doing online for quite a while, so right. I've relied on her expertise. and, and She's, she's kept, me, uh, kept me out of trouble with some of the grading issues and the online exams and things like that. So, um, yeah, we've, we've worked really well together. And uh, as a faculty unit, I think we've, we've been able to do a pretty bang up job. I think you're right. Amber? I think, um, yeah, I've been doing this for almost 20 years now. I've been teaching online, remote, hybrid, as well as face to face. And I think. Many of our faculty have that experience, which has helped with the transition. So we've been using video conferencing and doing online classes for many years. So for most of us, we've already had the training going into it. So it was when we got the phone call to make the switch, we were ready to do it. Yeah. The real, uh, you folks did a remarkable job in March where the switch had to be made um, in 48 hours, essentially. Um, and I imagine that was a grueling uh, transformation for a lot of folks that weren't as prepared maybe as you were with, uh, with going remote. Was, is that the case? That, yeah, that's a, a whirlwind <laughs> hurricane, whatever you want to call it. It was, uh, 
it was certainly interesting. But uh, you know, the, the faculty uh, uh, they they stepped up, and uh, I think a lot of them were just numb in doing what they had to do to make sure. it work, and uh, and we made it through it. But that that better prepared us for for this year, and fortunately yes. we were able to start up face-to-face uh, -face in a limited capacity, which allowed us to um, get to know our new students and uh, in that before we had to go to remote. And, you know, the, the remote option uh, I've, I've found, because I'm able to do that right from my office, mm -hmm. and our, our OIT department has uh, fixed me up pretty good with a Elmo document camera down. So. Normally, if I'm writing on a whiteboard, you know, now I can just write on a piece of paper right on my desk and then scan that in and give those notes to the students so they can access them through Blackboard. So there, there are some uh, benefits, actually, to using this technology that I never would have imagined. That, that, is, uh, that is such an important point. I, I don't mean to, uh, were you going to weigh in on that? Yeah, point? I, you know, when you think remote, uh, you think maybe impersonal? But actually, I found over time we've figured out ways to make it actually more personal because, you know, if you're in a classroom of 30, sometimes you may not get that close enough to a student to, to make that connection. But when they're remote, their face is right on the screen and you're seeing each one of them equally. And you can actually really get to know them in a different kind of way. That is such and an interesting point. Do you find that some students are more interactive? in a remote setting than they would be if they were in a class of 30 students? Yeah, actually. And we've found ways to do group, group work with breakout rooms and, and create a scenario where they can interact. So it's... That's yeah. great. I mean, I, that you touch on it. There's so many things in that uh, that are commendable. The role of the students and their willingness to uh, be a part of uh, this transition. Could you speak to that? Um, well, I think my students are, are more, far more comfortable with this technology than, than I was, at least at the beginning, and that they're, they're used to this. And uh, I think understanding the students and what they're accustomed to is, is, is a key point to making this successful. And that, uh, you know, small sound bites and that, and when I'm looking at the, my students on the screen, I, I, like, like Amber said, I, I see a, a video shot of all of my students, and of course I have to remind them to turn on their cameras because some of them are a little camera shy at first or yeah. maybe they're doing something else other than being in class. But the, the remote option where the students are live right in front of me, right on the screen in front of me, that um, uh, for me that's what makes this option work, you know, as opposed to posting a lecture on, uh, yeah. on YouTube or whatever like we had to do back in March. You know, having the real-time uh, interaction with the students and and as they're listed up on the screen there, when I'm going over review questions or anything like that, I, I just call on them. I pick one and uh, and ask them a question. They unmute their microphone, and so so they're more. I think they're more able to participate in class um, with the remote option, and in, in, in some cases better than if they were right there in front of me. Wonderful. Folks, we have about 30 seconds left. We could talk for a half an hour, and it would be interesting to me or more. Amber, anything you want to say uh, in closing? Um, I just want to give a little bit of a shout out to our technology group mm -hmm. who have been really supportive in our testing center, especially with next week being final exams. <laughs> yes. Thank you to all of them. Well, thank you, folks. Uh, you're, you're right. Thank you to, the, to OIT and testing, but thank you. Uh, really, uh, the faculty and that collaboration is what's kept the college afloat here during this pandemic period. And, and it's been a trying period, but I think there, as you point out, Todd, there will be things that will emerge from this that will make us even a stronger institution. And yes. that will benefit students in the community. Mm -hmm. And thank you folks for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. Clear. This is Mid Talk of the Job, you all. With your host, Nancy could... Smitham and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.